Hi, I'm Matt Harrison, president of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and I'm here today with Reverend Dr. Jim Bonick, who is the executive director of the pastoral education department of our synod. Jim, thanks for coming to talk to me. So tell me about this set apart to serve thing. What's happening? What is it? Well, it's pretty exciting, actually. It comes from Resolution 601 of the last convention, and it is a comprehensive, uh, synod-wide, collaborative, long-term uh, church worker recruitment initiative. What we're doing with the initiative is after a lot of research, we divided our children into three age groups because that's what we're doing. We're forming our children to be the next generation of church workers and leaders uh, in the church. And those three age groups are infant baptism through sixth grade, seventh and eighth grade, which is a primary time for influencing our uh, young people, and then ninth through twelfth grade. And we're working with our influencers, um, generally pastors, church workers, uh, which includes teachers and DCEs, deaconesses, with our parents, with our church leadership, to influence uh, our children, to encourage them to have the conversation, to engage them into the possibility of being church workers. Well, I know we're gonna need pastors. We need pastors already. And we have some large retiring classes ahead of us and smaller classes. They've had a bump at the seminary in numbers in uh, last year or two, but still we're going to need a lot more pastors, number one. And I do know we are crying out for teachers. So how did you figure out sort of what was the greatest influence on young people deciding to become pastors or teachers or other church workers? There again, we did um, research um, with um, surveys, with one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation focus groups. From our current church workers right now, a third of them said the most influential person for them to consider church work was their pastor. Right up there, close to the pastor, um, are our parents and um, our church workers, especially our DCEs, uh, deaconesses, and our Lutheran school teachers. You know, for the longest time, I think I was guilty of this too, but I would kind of wait. Is there any one specific young man I could pick out to encourage to consider the seminary? But there's been some rethinking on that lately that we as pastors should really look to identify or put the option in front of a large number of young people and let the Lord sort them out as it were. What do you think about that? We've had this conversation often about, you know, who do you, who do you identify and who really is the potential church worker? And uh, what, we've, what we have decided, and I think this is a right and biblical thing to do, is all the way back from infant baptism that we shape and form our children, first of all, in the faith our parents teaching the faith at home, certainly having our children involved in uh, divine service. And as they grow and mature, we start to see some traits. And all the more than the pastor, the teacher, hopefully the parents will say, you know, um, I, I identify or I see some things in you that I think you'd be a great church worker. I think it's really important for us to know that we're just sort of the mouthpiece for God, and we have a message, the message of Jesus. The, the harvest is white, but the laborers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest and workers. What do you make of prayer in this whole process? Well, I, I kind of think of uh, Monica, you know, St. Augustine's uh, mother. She, he wasn't a Christian at all, obviously, but um, uh, she prayed for him constantly, um, and I, I see the same thing. I, th I think that's very important. A parent praying, you know, Lord, um, one of my children may be a church worker. Uh, use me to encourage that, or at least to uh, grow or to uh, plant the faith in them. Same with uh, the pastor and the congregation. You know, but you, you cited the verse. I mean, that's so important that um, we do indeed pray for church workers. The other thing um, that we're hearing quite a bit about is we're dealing with basically a Generation Z um, clientele, um, children. And what they're telling us are some marvelous things. They want to serve, and they want to serve in some very meaningful ways. 
They want to serve in the church. They want to be able to tell people about their faith, about Jesus Christ and him crucified and risen from the dead. Well, I thank God that the Lord has brought you to this wonderful vocation. And I pray that through you and through many others, through all those church workers we have out there, pastors and teachers and deaconesses and DCEs and church musicians, uh, most of them who are finding joy in their vocations, we right. know, will especially share this possibility and encourage young people around them to follow in their footsteps for eternal blessings. Jim, tell us where else f folks can go to find information on Set Apart to Serve. Yeah, you can find it on our new website, uh, Set Apart to Serve. Um, actually, it's lcms.org slash set apart to serve. It's a wonderful website. It's going to have resources from our subject matter experts. It's going to have some deeper conversations about the office of the ministry and um, the teaching office and DCEs. Uh, it's going to have links to our seminaries and to our universities. That's where one would go is to our website right now. Great. And we pray that the Lord will bless this effort very richly for the current generation and generations to come. Amen. <laughs>